but you know that that's a really interesting way to look at it you know that you say the goals are different i Ooh, i right? gotta keep that in mind indeed right i mean Jan said something similar yeah oh, okay he also okay, wants great. to train into his 70s he said so well that's it and you're 21 so you probably don't even think about this kind of stuff but uh you're smart 21 right you're smart so Hopefully, just imagine yes, most of the time <laughs> Yeah, when you he hasn't taken four, too many headshots yet, so you know, let's keep that in mind, Vincent. <laughs> yeah, your interviews a year from now will be very different, I can guarantee. Um, if you if you think about right now, when you go work out hard, and the next day you kind of feel like, oh, you know, and you're, you're sore, yeah. and you kind of feel that you really pushed it. Well, when you get to be 50, that lasts much longer, and you don't get to bounce back and go right back to the gym the next day and heal up that fast. Your injuries and your traumas last longer. So right off the bat, that's just one simple idea of how it's completely different. So I trained already this morning. I got up and did my, my daily thing. And there's no way I can hit my workout in the morning now the way I used to when I was 20. It's a completely different workout, different speed, different exercises, different thinking. The whole thing is different. And so looking backwards, if I had started that when I was in my 20s instead of waiting till I couldn't do that stuff anymore – that to me is what traditional martial arts is really good at. To me, traditional martial arts was developed over a longer period of time. And so it was easier to kind of see, hey, you know what? This exercise, if you start this when you're a kid, you can still do this when you're 80. Whereas MMA is still a newer sport, a newer activity. Yeah. So you don't have this history of people saying, you know, if you train like this, you'll be able to train 10 years longer in your pro career and you'll be able to walk when you're 50. Yeah. So, you know, it's just a, a little more experience about how to use the body, how to breathe, how to visualize. And, um, yeah. and again, that may not work for short-term goals, but long-term, it's, it's all I got. That, now. That's the same with self-defense, in my opinion. You know, it's because some people, and I kind of agree, you know, they say MMA is the best for self-defense. And on one hand, I say, yeah. It is, you know, because you learn real fighting and so, you know, and stuff like that. But on the other hand, do you see a, a lady who's 60 years old, you know, who, who walks through tough neighborhoods? Right. She can train MMA for self-defense. She needs, you know, She's got to like, be a tough lady to be in that neighborhood. <laughs> she, she, she would be. I mean, some, some people from walker 60 walker years. Like I'm also a fan of uh, Nick Drosos. You know, you did some videos with him. I love those videos. He, he, he really, in my opinion, he really uh, has the mindset for self-defense for everyone. You know, he mm -hmm. takes stuff that works for everyone. And he, the physical stuff, you know, comes from him later. He first learns, you, you know, your mindset, what, what you need to worry about. And if you do that stuff correctly, 99% of the time, you know, you you will not get in trouble anyway because you saw something going down you walk the other way Be because that's what real self-defense and martial arts is about in my opinion absolutely yeah in you know in sports you step into the ring you say yeah. yes i will you fight you are the danger self-defense you'd like to step out of the ring and say i don't want to fight yeah you only fight if you have to so right off the bat again that's a huge difference and i look i'm not a hater i love mma but um so I believe MMA is good for self-defense. If you're not going to train anything or you could train an MMA, yeah. train MMA. All of those things work. But my question is, well, what else works? Because if yeah. you're not an elite athlete in your 20s, if you're smaller, weaker, slower, not an elite athlete, and you're being attacked by one or two people who are bigger, stronger, faster, and athletic, you've got a problem if you're trying to use the same techniques they're using. Yeah. Your totally. Muay Thai is not as good as their Muay Thai. <laughs> Your BJJ is not going to work against their BJJ. It's just that's why there are weight classes. That's yeah, why they're very absolutely. strict weight classes. Like 10 pounds is a big difference. So yeah, and those are against every elite pound makes a difference. Yeah. My I don't know. I kind of miss those days without the weight classes. Those are pretty fun fights. Well, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, that, at least it's a different question. And I like very that true. question. To me, traditional martial arts asks that question mixed martial arts or the sport of, uh, in any sport, judo, uh, fencing, I mean, all, all these combative sports, boxing, they ask a much smaller question. Yeah. What's the best fighting you can do against someone your size who's also an athlete, who's also in their prime? What can you do with then? Versus what can you do when you're outmatched, outgunned, unprepared, didn't want to do this, and it's also they might kill you? That's a, just a different question. Yeah, You can absolutely totally. apply stuff from MMA into that situation. 
but there are other answers and other ideas. Yeah, and to course. me, that's what makes training interesting and why you should be open-minded and look at what everybody's doing and get more answers because it's not just stand and bang. That, that, that's not going to work for me against some 20-year-old elite athlete who's awesome. I can't so, stand there and absolutely. trade punches with someone who's 20. I just can't. But that's and also I train a lot. I wouldn't recommend train it. Forever. No. But that's also why I love uh, an art, you know, something like BJJ, you know, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, because mm -hmm. in my opinion, it's one of the, if I had a child, for example, you know, in a few years when I hopefully have a child, you know, it's like, that's one of the arts I would put my child in because if they wanted to learn, uh, you know, a, a martial arts, because you, you're not going to get brain damage. If you train correctly, you know, you're not going to get injured most of the time because, you know, kids are less strong than adults. So, but it's also an art for me for older people because you know if you if you do get more experience you know you you can roll a little different you can you know take your time do certain things that slow your opponent down if you you know if you have the right style because one of the most uh, in my opinion one of the best jiu-jitsu coaches out there carol silverfox is his nickname silverfox you know that guy he really has a style that works for uh, for him but also for people you know who aren't as fast as the young guys anymore Sure. Yeah. BJJ, obviously it's a fantastic art. You can always choke somebody and that's a great technique. If you can get your hands on someone and get close, choking is choking. Okay. That's a winner. <laughs> that is a much very good better point. odds than trying to knock somebody out standing yeah. toe to toe. Um, that's, it has its limitations still, but absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Against multiple people, I wouldn't use it. <laughs> Nope. <laughs> not go to the ground with you know. okay i got one down i got two, three four okay too many to go <laughs> but i agree it's great for kids and um yeah. uh, mostly because the i found when you when you're a kid you don't mind bumping into people lying down rolling on people you have a innate sense of just being close and you're not afraid yeah. of it. and then as you get older don't touch back up stay away and the this striking is yeah, yeah, exactly. No space. Whoa, whoa. Hey, who's around me right now? Who's around me? And the striking arts enforce that. They're like, stay away from me. Get away from me. Don't let them get too close. Yes. Stay away. Stay away. Yeah. And if that's your psychology, that's why grapplers have the first advantage. If I'm not afraid of being close to you and you're afraid of me being close to you, the grappler has an advantage psychologically. Forget about yeah, technique. Totally. Oh, yeah. Like Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson was a striker as a boxer, but he wasn't afraid of being closer to big guys. So he was thinking, oh, yeah. I think, like a grapple. He's like, I'm coming right inside underneath your chin right here. And that's terrifying. These big guys are like, get away from me, get away from me. Yeah. He's like, I'm coming as close as I can. So um, that mentality, I think, the earlier you can get that into a kid and let them keep it, that's where the Brazilian jiu-jitsu is so powerful because you're saying, it's okay to be close. Never lose this feeling. And if you're old, if you spent your whole life being afraid yeah. of people, you're in big trouble because you're going to get touched. You're going to get yeah. knocked down. It's something bad's going to happen. The more comfortable you are with grabbing someone and holding someone and riding someone, the better. And you can always go back to striking, but boy, you better be comfortable hanging on. So yes, I agree. 100%. I mean, BJJ is fantastic for that. Fantastic. I mean, kind of touch on another point between the martial arts. Like I think a big factor for self-defense martial arts, separating mixed martial arts being a combative sport, governed by a commission and, you know, referees. I think a big factor that plays into um, self-defense martial arts, whether it's street karate or particular forms of self-defense taekwondo, is, um, you know, environmental awareness. Like, mm. I think that's a big factor because you can avoid 100% of fights if you know where you're going. Like, yeah, if someone awesome. says... Like, if someone says, hey, we're going to go to this bar, it's like, do you mean the bar that has a reputation for getting, like, the police called there all the time? Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> Pass. <laughs> hey, we're going to go to the Barnes & Noble. You mean the Barnes & Noble, the Starbucks that has no police activity there because no one does anything bad there at all except read books and drink coffee? Sold. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, although I wish more, I think even traditional martial arts schools, because MMA is so popular and it's so exciting <clears throat> most traditional martial arts schools feel they have to turn their classes into an mma style i can't imagine how many karate schools now have a big tire sitting in the middle of their dojo or how the sparring even with sport yeah. karate i the, one of the things that always drove me nuts was when i got into kung fu the whole point was i wanted to find other answers to the same problems that everybody has okay you're standing in front i see what the boxing answer is for that 
but Kung Fu has all these other movements, all these strange postures. So yeah, I love the hand traps, answering. you know, like Wing Chun or something like that. The hand traps. That's fair. Yeah. I mean, trapping and, and sticking to someone and finding other ways to fight. So I was curious about that. But when you look into it, especially with YouTube now, you can look at everybody's school pretty much. Yeah. It's just sad how many schools, they can call themselves karate or kempo or kung fu or call it whatever you want, but they end up all sparring exactly the same way. They all look like bad kickboxers. They're just yeah. throwing the yes. same kicks, same punches, same combinations, and they're all just flailing at each other. I shouldn't say that. I mean, some have some skills, but they just look like kickboxing. So why do I mean, you you're pretend not that it's kung fu? You're definitely not wrong. But to be, to be honest, I also think that comes from because they want to train you know, the the way, you know, kickboxing, for example, Dutch kickboxing, it's like, it looks that way because it's the most effective way to utilize that style. But if you want to, you know, try to train that way, while you, you know, have a karate background, it, it isn't going to add up. But if you train, you know, like sensor set, keep on the outside, for example, you know, use long range attack or Wonder Boy, you know, you're going to be really good at karate because you train the right way. I really think Wonder Boys and sensor sets style of training you know it's it really benefits them and they also all, both have a completely different body type that's well they're both healthy and strong and coordinated so they're not that different my mother is yeah, different that's, that's they're true, very they're, they're very similar very true. <laughs> they're both young strong athletic I mean, guys if, if you look at athlete <laughs> at, you know sensor said of course you know he's an athlete but if you look at wonder boy that guy is a super athlete i mean you know he's faster than Seth. But if you, I mean, but if you, if you look at, at, at them both, like, uh, how do I say it? You know, if you look at them like Wonder Boy, of course he can do it on a whole lot of level than Sensor said. But even Sensor said, you know, he said he's the chirpy surprise a little bit. You know, he calls himself that. But yeah, if you look at it, if, if even surprise. a guy, you know, with a little, who is a little bit chirpy like Seth can do all those things if you train correctly. I mean, why not could anyone? Of course, if they're healthy, you know. Ooh, and, and actually, Ben, so I still have a good analogy to that. Like, um, I'm sure you've seen a lot of kung fu movies, like uh, Ip Man one or two, like um, Donnie Yen versus um, no, you know who that. Sammo Hung is, right? No, <laughs> oh, sure, yeah. like Sammo Hung, I think is a very good example of like a very misleading body type that can do a very like good sure. job at like very athletic things. Yeah, like you know, you look at Sammo Hung. Is like I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm probably yeah. You're kind of you kind of. It's like he he's like a sumo okay. su sumo wrestler almost. Yeah, he yeah, looks like a sumo speaking. wrestler, but he moves so gracefully. It's like wilds. Like well, you see he people like high kicks, kicks, low kicks, yeah. spinning back kicks, everything. It's so weird to look at. It helps when you're beaten as a child to do those things. <laughs> it's see, built this, into that's it. what you need to do when you have a kid. Beat that kid ruthlessly. Beat and do the crap right out of it. Get that full split. <laughs> make sure he smiles, Vince. Make sure he smiles. Yeah, no, he had the base uh, for it's hard to. That's a beautiful thing when you can you know have it as a kid before you even knew you were training. You were training like the Gracies. I mean, when you're raised yes. in it, you're always going to have an edge over the people who are not raised in it. So yeah, um, are there also get, any problems with traditional martial arts that you think are obvious or for most that that count for most schools? problems with traditional martial arts schools yeah <laughs> how much time you got um well as much time as you want sir as much time the as you number want. one thing would be uh not if you don't have honesty in your training then you got a big problem and mm -hmm. this rush to try to keep up even in china i mean uh, you've talked with ram ramsey dewey i mean yeah. he's over there in china and he'll tell you you know that taekwondo is very popular and mma is growing in popularity and the traditional martial arts no so even in the, the motherland of Kung Fu, it's, it's not widely respected or looked at as the standard bearer of what's real. Yeah. And that's, they dropped the ball. I mean, that's, you know, the government went through changes and there were cultural shifts. I get yeah. that. But for anyone who's still carrying that flag saying, hey, we do traditional martial arts, if the one part of your program is missing where you actually are grabbing each other and pushing each other and working it out, then yeah. that's the biggest mistake. You have to know that what you're teaching is legit. Um, and by legit, I don't mean that there's always one solution. Like, oh, that's a legit technique statistically. No, no, no. For you, as just like in BJJ, there are millions of techniques you can do. You find your own way through BJJ to say, well, I'm a, I'm a guard player. Oh, I'm a top yeah. guy. I'm a whatever. I'm a speed passer. I'm a pressure passer. You're allowed to kind of find your own game. You can't be good at everything. So you find mm, your path true. through that information. Kung Fu, traditional Kung Fu, again, yeah. 
so many styles, so many forms, so many things. But the, the mistake is like, oh, I have to learn all of these things to be good at something. It's like, no, no, no. It's like a supermarket. You go through and you find, oh, I need this. I need some of that. I'm out of that. Let me try this for the first time. Let me see what that's like. And you kind of fill up your cart with what you need and what works for your life. So, but if you don't have that's the actually honest, a really good point. Very good point. Actually, <laughs> it's actually a really good point. Thank you. Uh, yeah, well, you know what I mean. So it's yeah. you have to find your own way. And um, if a traditional martial art is not allowing students to experiment and test like you can in BJJ or in boxing, then you'll never, ever, ever very be good, good at this stuff. That 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 also that that. I now like now that you say it, it's analogy. like it's like you in modern you know martial arts you kind of have that freedom indeed. Yeah, because I also started out in karate and we had a style that was you know like it was like you know we sparred and we did you know actually physical contact with each other. But Great. and later I started kickboxing and then MMA. But for for the longest time, really, I when I for example started kickboxing, I was like, no, you got to throw your front kick front kick like that. Traditional martial arts indeed. You know, they have a certain way of thinking and drilling the students. Absolutely. And, you know, and I'm sure there are BJJ schools that do that too. Uh, Lloyd Irvin, sure. I think he had some really, you know, you get here, you do this. Red light, green light. I mean, there are certain yeah. ways that you can make people <clears throat> fit into your mold, but that's how you learn the alphabet. When you're, when you're a child, you don't say make up your own alphabet. You say, look, learn this. A, B, C, D, E. You learn that alphabet. Write it. Know that very systematic, yes. To be yeah, honest, you, there has I to be some Kena period of kind of need that, though. Yeah, you Kena. need that. So in BJJ too, you don't just say, "Hey, it's your first day. Go on, make up something." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can, but it's a different way to train than saying, "Let's today just talk about positions. Yeah. Here's what we think is pretty good. Here's what we don't think is pretty good. Let's experiment with these positions. Let's get good with that." But then, look, even in BJJ, right? Like uh, I can't remember how many years, like twelve years, ten years you know, half guard or an MMA, you know, half guard, terrible. Don't get in half guard, stay out of there. But now it's like, no, no, you know, I prefer to be in half guard. There's a whole yeah. game from half guard in BJJ or MMA. You know, why would you be in mount when you could be on the side? Wait a minute. There's all kinds of other things you can do. Yeah. So, oh yeah. It's also for the guys on to top. Learn. I mean, if you, you know, for, for, for the few years, it was like half guard, you know, you don't, you know, you know, you want to pass right away, but if I'm on top, I don't mind being in a half guard. I can, as long as I have my underhook on the same side, you know, I can grab a pound all day without getting, yeah. uh, you know, sweeped or anything. Yeah, very stable, good position. Yeah, it does seem like a lot of things that happen with mixed martial arts do tend to be like in trends. I was talking to that, talking to that point with uh, Jeff Chan the other time. Like, um, there was a renaissance of like points where mount control was like a really good thing. And then, like mm -hmm. you said, half guard used to be kind of like taboo, like, no, nah, don't end up there. You can't do anything from half guard. Uh, and then it became like a prominent thing when Randy Gotor was demonstrating yeah. the effectiveness of holding down one leg while being able mm -hmm. to keep shoulder pressure on sure. and then throw that ground and pound. And now we're into a new renaissance with, um, grappling with like the foot locks. Like, you know, yeah, that's been a big thing. Sure. Team leg lock. <laughs> yeah, like but also with Eddie, like also with Eddie Bravo style, you know, you like his rubber guard really changed the, you know, because so strong wrestlers, if they can keep the posture, it's really hard, you know, without shirts to to get somebody down. With with rubber guards, you know, you can keep somebody down with your legs all day. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's wonderful. But, but definitely good at everything. You can't be good at everything, which is why there's no. trends. Yeah. Because exactly, you kind of fall. Well, this is popular again. Most. Here we go. Okay, listen. <laughs> there are leaders and there are followers. So when the first guy comes out, when Connor comes in and shoulder pops somebody like with some dirty box, yeah. and everybody goes, <laughs> oh my God. Now the next day I guarantee in any gym that was still open, everyone was practicing that move. It's been around forever, ever. Yeah. I, I was shocked that anybody thought that was a big deal. I'm shocked that people don't do it all the time. Um, but then suddenly, oh, that sparks this trend because there was a leader and then you got a bunch of followers jumping in. It's the same with Some, John Denner with leg locks. With the leg locks, all right? So you have a leader and they work on this thing and they got this new secret weapon. They come out, they dominate all these competitions. And now there's like a 10 year catch up, like let's all catch up. And now that's gonna eventually, everyone's gonna have such great defense from that, that that'll become an option. It's still your game, then use it. But there'll be so many defenses and the technology yeah. will get better. Just like guard used to be. I mean, there'd be a time when like, oh no, close guard, close guard, it's gotta be close guard. People got so good at passing guard, like, forget guard, open guard, open guard, open guard. Everyone's getting past <laughs> open guard. Forget that. Go back to the legs. Go back to the legs. Go back to the legs. 
So it's you know, a, but it's if you got race, if you can right? combine a few of those things, you know, like if your open guard is amazing, and if that gets passed, you know, your 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 mount escape or your leg locks are great. You know, if you have certain things and you can, you know, flow with those, you have, you know, you, well, you can protect yourself way easier. Okay, so now that brings you a choice as a martial artist. One, you can be a generalist, like you just said, and say, well, I should be kind of good at all of these things, which is kind of what mixed martial arts, in theory, is. Oh, look, mm -hmm. I'm pretty good at boxing, but a real boxer would beat me. I'm pretty good at jujitsu, but a yeah. dedicated jujitsu guy is going to kill me. So you're kind of good at a bunch of things. Or B, Ryan Hall, where you've got one really good game, and you're so good at it, you can make it work against anybody. Or Ronda Rousey for a while with that arm bar. Yeah. If, that's a different way to train. That's or Marcelo Garcia doing what he did. There are, that's a totally different way to approach your training. Either you're going to say, look, I know there's lots of things you could be good at. I don't have time for all of that. I do this one thing and I'm going to live or die by it. I'm going to go for that arm bar. Either I win or I die. I'm going to go for that uh, leg or I'm not going to get it. And totally. yeah. I think you have to make that choice somewhere along the line as a martial artist. Like what kind of training do you have? How many hours do you have to train? What do you want? What do you want? Because yeah, I think.